So buffers contain a mixture of a weak acid, which we'll denote as HA here, okay, protonated um, acid form, and a weak base, the deprotonated form, that we'll denote A minus. And these are typically the same conjugate acid base pair, so they're derived um, from the same acid structure. And because of the presence of the acid, we can absorb a little bit of hydroxide. Because of the base, we can absorb a little bit of hydronium. And so we resist drastic changes in pH. And we're going to create this buffer either by addition of a common ion in the form of a salt directly, or we're going to um, titrate the acid or base, and then in the process create some of its conjugate pair um, through that process. And because buffers um, have, have measurable quantities of the weak acid and weak base at the same time, it allows us to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, um, which drastically simplifies our calculation of pH if we're given the Ka or pKa value. And so there's two forms of it. In the first form, um, we're measuring pH, and we're looking for the um, pKa of the conjugate acid, and that is derived from the expression for Ka. In the other form, we have pOH and pKb determines um, the base of this Henderson-Hasselbalch expression, and it's derived originally from the expression we see here on the right for Kb. Um, and both apply at all times. So wherever um, we're going to see wherever the concentration of A minus and HA are equal, um, we're going to have both of these things true. We're going to have pH equals pKa and pOH equals pKb whenever our concentrations are the same because log of 1 is 0. Both are true at the same time. It's just normally a pH plot um, is what we use for titrations rather than pOH. So normally we just say pH equals pKa at this point, but both are true. So when we cannot use a buffer, knowing when to not use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is just as important as knowing when to use it. And so if we don't have a buffer, we can't use it, and we have to use equilibrium ice tables from our balanced equilibrium expression. So if we're just calculating the pH of an acid in solution or the conjugate base, like if we dissolve sodium uh, fluoride here, we wouldn't be able to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch, as we'll see, because we don't have concentrations of both the acid and the base to start with. And there's a high degree of error to that equation if we have a very, 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 very low concentration of one of the two. So let's draw this dissociation. HF will dissociate um, in water to form its conjugate base, F minus, and then the hydronium ion with water. And the problem with using the Henderson-Hasselbalch is we start with no concentration of our conjugate base at all. Here we have 1.0 for our conjugate acid. And so we're going to lose a little bit of that. We're going to gain a little bit of conjugate base, gain a little bit of hydronium. And once equilibrium is established, we'll have 1 minus x and then x and x here for both of our um, dissociated ion species here. Okay, And so if we are going to go ahead and solve this, we are given in our e equation here the pKa is 3.14, which means Ka is going to be 10 raised to the negative pKa because okay, pK is negative log of Ka. And so we can do that. We can find that value. 10 raised to the negative 3.14 is going to be in decimal notation 7.24 times 10 to the minus 4. And so if we're thinking about, well, can I use our um, simple, well, let's go ahead and set up the expression, and we'll talk about if we can drop this x off here um, once we get that set up. So um, products in aqueous solution over the reactant in aqueous solution. There's our Ka expression, and then we have x squared over 1 minus x. And so the question is, can we drop that x? And the answer is, yes, we can. And the reason being is because we have a 1.0 molarity 
our equilibrium constant is 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, 4 decimal places, 7, 2, 4. And from our last significant digit, we are here 1, 2, 3 or more digits away from that last significant digit. So anything contributed from this X is going to be very small relative to our one molar there, so we can actually ignore it from the expression. Drastically simplifies our calculation because we don't have to use the quadratic equation and multiply by one, take the square root, and we get 0 0.0269 molar in hydronium, which if we take the negative log is a pH of 1.57. Okay, had to use an ice table there. If we have a buffer, what we're going to see is a concentration of both our acid and base form for an initial condition. We're going to have a common ion in place. So again, write your balanced equation. And if we look, we don't start with any hydronium, but we do have one mole dissolved in one liter, so this is 1.00 molar of fluoride that we've spiked the solution with, and we also have one mole of HF in one liter, so 1.00 molar of HF. So we have an initial condition for both the acid and the base form, HA and A minus have an initial concentration. We do indeed have a buffer, so we can use that Henderson-Hasselbalch equation without even using an ice table although you could do the ice table if you wanted to. So pH equals pKa 3.14 plus the log of base concentration divided by the acid concentration. Take the log of that whole expression. Well, it turns out here we've got an equal concentration of HA and A minus, log of 1 is equal to zero and so our pH equals our pKa in that situation.